Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. Disney has been shooting out hit family-friendly movies for decades, but not everything created makes it into the final edit. Join us as we take a look at some of the saddest deleted scenes from your favorite Disney movies. Just make sure you got a box of tissues on standby. Simba's Peril, The Lion King. The Lion King has some dark elements to it, considering that it's a family-friendly movie. Loosely based on Shakespeare's tragedy Hamlet, there's a lot of drama and sadness going on. When Mufasa is slain by Scar, aka his own brother, you'd think that it couldn't really get any worse. However, Simba has a few run-ins with his villainous uncle that are simultaneously tense and thrilling. At the end of the movie, Scar attacks his nephew, and Simba retaliates by tossing over a cliff like he's a bag of dirt. Scar survives his fall, but is later devoured by the very hyenas that used to bow down to him. It's poetic justice at its finest. There's no denying that the scene is iconic, but writers almost went in a different direction. Back when the storyboards for the movie were being developed, a scene was drawn up that saw Scar and Simba fight, but it had a very different outcome. During the battle on Pride Rock, Scar is left clinging to the edge of the cliff. Simba decides to help him. Scar takes advantage of his kindness and throws Simba off the rock instead. He doesn't exactly get away scot-free, though. Simba survives, but Scar falls victim to the flames, all while laughing maniacally. Not only is the alternate ending unsettling, but it's sad as we get to see the true extent of Scar's madness. Human Again, Beauty and the Beast. When it comes to musical animated features, Beauty and the Beast has it all. With all the singing, dancing, and jovial candlesticks flying around, it can be easy to forget the darker aspects of the story. All the staff and servants in the castle have been turned into household items for crying out loud. Can you imagine how peeved you'd be if some old witch turned you into a lazy Susan? Let's not even talk about the chamber pots! <laughs> Yeesh! Characters like Lumiere, Mr. Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts are important throughout the story, but they're making the best of an awful situation. Sure, they're eager for Beast to turn into a human and break the curse, but they want out too. This was made very clear in one song that never made the original release. Human Again is an 11 minute long number that was dedicated to the plight of the staff members. The catchy number sees the characters lamenting about what they want to do when the curse is broken. It's beautiful and heartbreaking, but was cut due to timing issues. Luckily enough for fans, it was inserted into the 2002 release, but a lot of people still don't realize it even exists. Pudge's Passing, Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch was something different for Disney, who decided to try something new. The unusual characters of Stitch have some quirky qualities, but in the movie, he's largely good. He has a few traits that need to be ironed out, but Lilo keeps him in check. Writers adjusted a few things while developing the plot. Initially, Stitch hijacked a plane to rescue Lilo, but this had to be changed last minute after the September 11th attacks. In the finished version, Stitch jumps into an alien spacecraft instead. During the early animation process, there was one scene that could have had audiences looking at Stitch in an entirely different light. Lilo takes her new dog to meet her best friend, Pudge the Fish. When she introduces him to Stitch, the Blue Devil laughs and hits Pudge out of Lilo's hand. He goes flying across the beach and lands on the rocks. As Lilo rushes to him, he's attacked by a gang of seagulls. All the while, Stitch sits back and laughs at the chaos. The little girl calls out to Stitch for help, but he doesn't. He just sits there. Pudge ceases to be, and Lilo buries him on the beach, mortified that Stitch didn't help her. It's really no wonder that this was left out. There wouldn't have been a dry eye in the house. Nick's Collar, Zootopia. Disney often portrays animals as free-roaming creatures that have the world as their oyster. They took that a step further with Zootopia, which centered on a city ran entirely by all sorts of critters. Some of them were honorable, working for the police force, while others were considered dangerous. Enter Nick the Scheming Fox. The movie tackles a whole host of issues, all carefully disguised in kid-friendly packaging. However, at one point the story was going to contain some disturbing shock collar scenes. In one deleted sequence, Nick is at the doctor's office looking disheveled as he's being examined. The doctor takes off the collar for a brief moment and this is where it becomes a real Kleenex moment. Nick has visions of being free, running through the daisies with his buddies without a care in the world. Those are quickly disrupted when the doc puts the collar back on and the poor fox is defeated once more. Can you imagine getting a taste of freedom like that? Pixar employees advised animators to think twice about the use of shock collars after seeing the initial footage. The powers that be listened to the feedback and ditched the deplorable items for good. After all, what's the point of a Disney movie if it's going to distress children, right? The Graveyard. Cars. Some Disney movies have elements to them that make them enjoyable for kids and adults alike. Cars has some of those, but was predominantly aimed at the younger end of the market. The chances are you'll know a toddler or three that has some sort of Cars merch. Disney really hit the nail on the head with this one, which tells the tale of Lightning McQueen. 
With the target audience in mind, this may surprise you. While Lightning McQueen is trying to find his way to the interstate, he gets lost and stumbles into a graveyard full of cars. They're essentially rotting away, with branches protruding out of their crevices and rust enveloping their exteriors. If you think about this in real terms, it's the equivalent of someone stumbling into a morgue. It's scary for the red racing cars he can't seem to escape, but it's also a shock to his system. He's suddenly reminded that not all cars last forever. Younger viewers might not get the horror, but it's best that Disney left this one on the scrap heap anyway. It never made it past storyboarding. Geppetto's Meal, Pinocchio. Back in the 40s, Disney writers weren't afraid to get down with their bad selves. Actually, a lot of the earlier features were pretty twisted. Snow White was tormented by the trees in the dark forest, running away from her murderous stepmom. Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty wasn't known for her friendly persona either. Perhaps one of the most twisted Disney movies of all, though, is Pinocchio. It's hailed as a classic now, but oof, boy, it was a wild ride. The little wooden puppet goes on some crazy adventures, complete with chain smoking and tons of alcohol. It wouldn't fly now, but it happened. There are some questionable scenes throughout the movie, but one of the most interesting got cut. Known as sequence 10.1, this deleted snippet was particularly fascinating, as it focuses on the boy's stepfather, Geppetto. Geppetto is stranded on his broken ship in the belly of a whale. The cupboards are bare, and he and his cat Figaro are utterly starving. They try fishing, but ironically, the only thing that they can catch is a cookbook. The only thing they're rubbing salt into is their wounds. Desperate, they both start to look at their pet fish in an entirely new light. The woodcarver is initially disturbed by Figaro's advances toward Cleo, but it's not long before he starts licking his lips delusional with hunger. Lucky for the fish, she survives. The stunning storyboard was released on the 70th anniversary Platinum Edition. Alternate opening, Tarzan. Tarzan is memorable for a number of reasons, including the incredible soundtrack by Phil Collins. It's just a fantastic concept that's been revisited numerous times. Who doesn't want to listen to the story of a man in the jungle living with the apes and flourishing to boot? It's brilliant! The movie opens on a somber note, as baby Tarzan and his family are shipwrecked on an island. We don't see much of what happens to Tarzan's parents, but it's clear that they perish when a leopard attacks their new home. By chance, Tarzan survives the initial attack and is rescued by Kala. The Big Mama Gorilla raises the Big T as her own, much to the disdain of her partner. The initial opening was much more detailed, showing the attack in an incredibly violent two-minute long segment. Baby Tarzan is sat with his dad as we see him crying over a picture of his mom who presumably didn't make it in the wreck. Next thing you know, the leopard flies through the window and makes quick work of Papa Tarzan, even dragging away the body. Thank goodness that animators thought better of the whole thing and whittled it down. Kids wouldn't have made it past the first scene without needing therapy. The Cauldron Born, The Black Cauldron Gross, gooey, falling apart, and we're not talking about the candy you find on the floor of the cinema. The Black Cauldron is undoubtedly one of Disney's darkest endeavors. The 1985 movie is set in the Middle Ages, with the evil Horned King as the villainous antagonist. Young Turan and his friend Princess Alanwi try to fight back, but his power is almost too great. Rumor has it that some children were so terrified during a test screening that they fled the cinema in horror. It's not hard to see why when you get an eyeful of these deleted snippets. The Horned King has his very own army of hellish zombie-like creatures. They don't want to visit for tea and cake, either. They have one sole purpose, to destroy every living thing in their path. You could say that there's something really Game of Thrones-like about the whole thing. While the characters are included in the movie, there are a few moments that were considerably whittled down. Why? Eh, presumably to stop the Black Cauldron from turning into a B-movie horror flick that John Russo would have been proud of. Thankfully, we live in the modern age, and some technical wizards have put together the missing bits in all of their ghoulish glory. Maybe this is more scary than sad, but either way, it's worth mentioning. Elsa's Torture, Frozen it's difficult to conceive, but Elsa was originally supposed to be the villain of Frozen. Once writers started figuring everything out, they soon realized that they didn't want her to be the bad guy at all. Instead, they turned her into a complex character that became a huge sensation. There are some surviving storyboards that show the extent of evil Elsa's powers, though, and they're worth watching. Two soldiers stumble across Elsa's mountain, having been sent to find Anna by the Admiral. Elsa captures both of them in her icy grasp, forcing them to talk by crushing them with ice. Doesn't sound like the Queen of Arendelle that we all know and love, does it? Elsa's tone is worrying, as is her terrifying snow army that comes out of nowhere. Can you imagine what the movie would have been like if writers continued down that route? It's heartbreaking to think that the power duo of Anna and Elsa would have never been imagined. Plus, Disney would have certainly been crying from the merchandising revenue that they missed out on. Would we still have had Let It Go? Who knows, but it sounds like a dark, dark world if you ask us. 
Luckily, it all worked out for the best, and we're all gearing up to see what the Royals get up to in the sequel later this year. Which one got you right in the feels? Do you think any of these should have made the released version? Sound off in the comments. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up before you go and hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss a thing from us here at The Binger. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.